So how does the laser therapy work? Again, you see photobiomodulation, that's just a fancy term for laser therapy, but I think it's worth talking about. If we break down photobiomodulation, it sounds like a big nerdy term, but if you break it down into three parts, you can break it down into photo, bio, and modulation. The photo part stands for light, okay? So think of light. The bio is the body, and modulation is you can impact the body's physiologic processes. You can turn them up or down, you can modulate them. So photobiomodulation literally means uh, light changes the body. Okay. So as this picture shows, photobiomodulation is like jump starting a dead car battery. It improves the function of mitochondria within the cell, which increases ATP production. So even simpler than that, you can see the mitochondria in this picture. The mitochondria is the red thing on the right. That red thing on the right looks like a little kidney bean. If you look at the blue thing on the left, the blue thing on the left is one of your cells, okay? We have trillions of these cells in our body. So the whole blue thing is a cell, and that blue thing, you can see the little kidney beans floating around in it. Those are the mitochondria. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells. Mitochondria make energy, which is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and that ATP is the energy currency our body uses to do work, okay? So if we can shine a light on a cell or on a tissue or an organ or a body, the light goes into the mitochondria, hits them, and in the mitochondria, you have what's called the electron transport chain, which is how ATP is made, and specifically, the light hits the cytochrome C oxidase part of that chain and increases uh, ATP production. So we can literally increase your energy by increasing or by shining laser on you, shining light on you. And if we can increase your energy, right, depending on the cell that we're increasing the energy in, we can increase the metabolic outcomes of that cell, right? So if you have more energy, you can do more work. So if that cell is a neuron, we can improve your brain function. If that cell is a, is a wound, we can speed healing. If that cell is your thyroid, we can improve thyroid function. Whatever cell we're shining it on, we can improve the function of that cell tissue or organ by shining the light on it. So it's really cool. And it provides a broad um, range of things that laser can help with. Here's a, a graphic from a study showing the impact of lasers for the brain. So if you have Parkinson's disease, or you have traumatic brain injury, or you have anxiety, or you have neurodevelopmental disorder like autism or learning disabilities or whatever it is, we can use laser on the brain uh, to improve brain function from blood flow to synaptogenesis, which is the, the way that neurons talk to each other. The more synapses you have, the more pathways you have, the more you can remember, the more you can do. Laser increases uh, nerve growth factors in the brain so those nerves can be healthier and connect better. It improves uh, nerve brain stem cells and it decreases brain inflammation, brain swelling, and brain excitotoxicity, which is, you know, if you think of MSG, MSG is a neurotoxin. It's, it's excitotoxic. It turns your, it makes your neurons work too much and eventually explode is a way to think about it. So the laser use on the brain is anti-inflammatory and promotes healing and, and brain connection, which leads to brain function. If we think about laser for healing and recovery, um, this graphics from NeuroSolutions and Dr. Ryan Cedermark. Um, and, and again, red light therapy, laser therapy, improves circulation, which improves nutrient delivery to whatever site you're trying to drive it to. It improves oxygenation, so all tissues need oxygen. It decreases pain and inflammation, increases energy, muscle strength, um, decreased soreness after exercise, restoration of range of motion. Uh, there's studies showing that post-surgical, it speeds surgical recovery, even with bone grafts. So there's a lot of benefit for uh, physical therapy, manual therapy, performance. Lasers for the gut. This is new research, but... Um, Using laser in the gut, specifically the infrared spectrum, again, this is from Dr. Cedarmark, but um, lasers 
in the infrared spectrum, which you can't see, okay, but is still produced by the laser, shows that, um, you know, one study showed a 10,000 fold increase in the ratio of healthy probiotics in the gut compared to not using laser. So we can improve the microbiome with near infrared light. With the red light, you can improve the gut healing and the gut ATP production and the blood flow and the oxygenation. So GI issues, uh, laser can be used for those and, it, and is being used for those in the research, in my office, anywhere people uh, know this information. Laser for anxiety is very, very effective. There's many studies on laser for anxiety and depression. Here's a sampling of a couple. And what you can see on your far left is that laser with near infrared for general anxiety disorder is very effective. You can see they used it daily for 20 minutes a day for eight weeks. And there was a significant reduction in the total anxiety scores on certain anxiety surveys that they use in uh, anxiety treatment, as well as a significant improvement in sleep with no serious adverse events. So that study ends with, um, you know, near infrared for anxiety is a promising alternative treatment. And I should say, I didn't say earlier, but there's almost no negative side effects from laser. Basically, as long as you're not shining it directly into your eyeball, uh, you're good to go. So it's non-invasive, it's safe, it's inexpensive, it's, it's great. Uh, the, the middle study concludes that transcranial laser improves brain activity and may clinically decrease anxiety and depression. And then the study on the right says laser prevents anxiety and depression via increasing serotonin and nitric oxide levels. So this study is pretty interesting. If you look at the blue down at the bottom, it says near infrared laser improved behavioral results, decreased cortisol levels, increased serotonin, and decreased nitric oxide in the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus. The hippocampus is where short-term memory is. The hippocampus sets your circadian rhythm and impacts stress response. The prefrontal cortex is, is our executive function. So that's where uh, you know, dopamine and serotonin are happening so we can focus, concentrate, plan, set goals, et cetera. Um, so in this study, they used near infrared and showed maximum effects and behavioral, behavioral and molecular results. Our results demonstrated that it had anti-anxiety and anti-depression effect, which is probably linked to increasing serotonin and decreasing nitric oxide in the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus. So again, if you have anxiety, you know someone with anxiety or depression, laser has been shown to be very efficacious for that. And then you can use laser for almost anything else. Uh, this, this graphic is pulled from a study that was published in 2020. And in it, they're talking about using it for using laser for recovery from, uh, you know, current events from the past two years, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, they also talk about how you can use laser for basically anything else in the body. And here's a graphic showing you many of those sites from TMJ pain to neck pain to Alzheimer's to arthritis to peripheral neuropathy to the gut microbiome to sexual dysfunction. And then you can use laser on your family because ultimately you want to help them, right? So here's a couple graphics of my family. I'm using it on my little dude there on the left. We were um, at my sister's for Christmas and he thought it was cool to see how many stairs he could jump down. And I think three is what he got to before he got hurt. So he's having some foot pain and not able to walk. So I was lasering him and getting him walking almost immediately afterward once we got home and I had access to my lasers again. Uh, in the middle there is my dad and we're doing laser on his lungs post, uh, post infection. And you know what I'm talking about there. So, um, you know, double pneumonia, we're using lasers on that. So let's look at laser for Hashimoto specifically. And so here's a shot, a screenshot of the study I'm going to talk about, but uh, let's dive into the actual study. 
So let me switch screens here and we'll go over to that study. All right, and here we are. So this study is titled The Impact of Photobiomodulation or the Impact of Laser on T3, T4 Ratio and Quality of Life in Hashimoto's Thyroiditis. And so in this study, what they did is they wanted to see, can laser benefit Hashimoto's patients? So they looked at a total of 350 patients that were already diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease. Group one was 210 of those patients. Group one received laser therapy and supplements such as vitamin D, iron, and selenium. Group two was 140 people with Hashimoto's. They didn't receive laser. They received the supplements only. And what they wanted to measure was they wanted to keep track of, well, what were the patient's needs for uh, T4 replacement or Synthroid or Levothyroxine, okay, which is the medic most common medication given. They also wanted to observe their impacts on T3 and T4 levels, TSH levels, T3, T4 ratio, and thyroid antibody levels. The thyroid antibodies are what are showing are the evidence of the autoimmune attack. And so the results of the study show that uh, in comparing both groups, the increase in T3 levels, which is the most metabolically active form of thyroid hormone, and the T3 to T4 ratio was markedly superior in group one, in the laser group. The decrease in thyroid peroxidase antibody levels is also significantly different between both groups, greater in the laser group. So the laser reduced antibody levels more, suggesting reduced autoimmune attack. And then the hormone replacement needs were also significantly decreased in the laser group compared to the supplement only group. In blue, low level laser therapy is 70 times more effective in increasing T3 to T4 ratio and 15 times more effective in decreasing medication dosage than the supplements alone. So in conclusion, laser seems to be very effective in increasing T3 to T4 ratio and decreasing antibody levels and weekly doses of thyroid hormone replacement therapy. Anti-inflammatory properties of laser are greatly responsible for these changes and laser causes major improvements in Hashimoto's related symptoms of the patient. Boom, that would be enough in and of itself, but I wanna get a little more granular here. Here's the, the, in red here, here's the line from the study saying no current treatment for underlying pathologic mechanisms in Hashimoto's is available. So that's why they want to study laser and supplements to say, hey, we think there is, let's prove it. Um, laser is non-invasive, low risk, easy to perform and low cost right there. So we showed you, they took the 340 people. It's interesting you know, they did the laser, we talked about that, and we'll talk about that more, but the supplements were vitamin D, iron, and selenium. And vitamin D deficiency was considered, um, you know, in this study, if they had less than 40 vitamin D, they would replace it. People with iron levels less than 30, they received iron, and then everyone was given 100 micrograms of selenium. Uh, so you saw the results. People, people with just the supplements improved, but people with laser and supplements improved 70 times better T3, T4 ratio and 15 times uh, less medication dose. So that's really important. How did the laser work? Why does the laser get those results? Laser interacts with the photoacceptors of, of the mitochondria, basically. Okay. So because of this, ATP production nitric oxide and calcium levels increase, stimulating expression of cytokines and growth factors. Um, overall cell protection and cell regeneration occurs, okay? It increases circulation, it improves thyroid hormone function. It increases the T3, T4 ratio. If this ratio is low, it indicates there's insufficient conversion of T4 hormone to T3. The distortion of this transformation determines the intensity of symptoms. So if we can improve the T3 to T4 ratio, we're reducing Hashimoto symptoms, improving T3 levels for the body. Um, both T3 levels and T3 to T4 ratio increase in group one. We established a significant reduction in the patient's needs for hormone replacement therapy, which suggests improved thyroid function and regeneration. All patients demonstrate a decrease in thyroid hormone dose and 60 of the patients or 28% of them stopped using the medication completely at the end of three months. 
So this, I didn't say that earlier, but what they did was um, they gave them six sessions were applied twice daily for a total of three days. So six laser sessions twice a day uh, for three days is what it took. There were no side effects you can see here and no protection was required. It's very safe. Okay, so 28% of people no longer needed medication. 28% of Hashimoto's patients no longer needed uh, uh, medication at the end of care. In a different study, these authors note 47% of that, the patients in that study were able to stop their medication. So multiple studies are showing that a high amount of patients, Hashimoto's patients that receive laser no longer need medication. There's also a reduction of thyroid peroxidase antibodies, which is the, you know, the antibodies indicating the autoimmune response, uh, indicating a decrease in the autoimmune response against the thyroid. The antibody levels in group one were significantly lower than group two, which is attributed to the anti-inflammatory effects of laser. Check this out. Laser inhibits production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1 beta, and IL-6 by inhibiting gene expression. Boom. For those of you who have been on the calls the last two weeks, where have we heard this before? TNF-alpha interleukin-6. TNF-alpha interleukin-6, right? Two weeks ago, the purpose of the, the video was to cover the possibility that your chronic inflammation that isn't responding to anti-inflammatory drugs or natural means may be due to you having genetic mutations in the genes that code for TNF-alpha and interleukin-6, making you produce more than is normal. So you're more inflamed than the baseline person. Well, this is saying the laser inhibits TNF-alpha production and IL-6 production by inhibiting genetic expression, right? And in those videos, we talk about you might have the gene variant, but it doesn't necessarily have to be turned on, right? It might never be turned on. When it is turned on, though, because of lifestyle, environment, choices, now that gene mutation has its impact. So now you're produ producing too much inflammation. Well, the laser shut it off by inhibiting the gene expression. So this study show, suggests that laser is one way to turn off the genes that are driving TNF-alpha and IL-6. And reducing those levels reduces the inflammation that drives damage in autoimmunity. So that is, that is big time, and that's a huge tie-in back to our video two weeks ago, and then last week when we were talking about how that inflammation affects uh, TSH levels and brain control of thyroid and vagus nerve function. So in conclusion, our results are encouraging and laser seems to be very effective in increasing T3 to T4 ratio, decreasing thyroid autoimmune antibody levels, and decreasing thyroid hormone replacement levels. Boom, laser for thyroid.